Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.3, an Eagle Dynamics A10C2 tank killer module. Today we're going to take a quick look at the ARC-210 radio, the latest addition to this aircraft, and in fact the final feature to be implemented for version 2 of the A10C2. Um, this is a, a brand new UHF VHF radio, and in the future it might even uh, receive the satellite comms mode that the, the real radio has as well. Uh, this complements the radio fit in the A10C, uh, which currently includes the ARC-164 for UHF comms and the ARC-186, which is your VHF FM radio. Let's uh, jump straight into the cockpit and have a little look here. Uh, so you're going to notice down here that you have a new radio head installed just rear of the throttles. Uh, it's right in front of the, the 164, your UHF, uh, and then at the back here we've got the 186, the FM, uh, and then we've got your uh, KY, I think it's the KY unit, this one. Yeah, KY58. Uh, that's actually here uh, at the very, very back. So, uh, how do we work with this? Well, at first I'm going to show you the minimum amount of equipment you need to power on to be able to work with the radio. Uh, we're just going to, we're not going to bother starting up the whole aircraft, we're just going to do some playing around on the ground. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, plug in the ground power because then we won't drain the battery. Copy. Ground power is now on. There we go. Aircraft is now powered. I'm going to turn on the kick you and then turn on left and right uh, in, uh, multifunction displays and the IFCC I'm going to put to on so we then have the HUD. I'm just going to wait for the, the kick you to boot up now. Uh, while I'm waiting for that, uh, I'll actually go ahead and uh, boot up the other two radios, but I'm not going to boot up the 210 just yet. Uh, you'll notice that the UHF repeater that we have low in the cockpit here, this is for the, the older 164 radio, this is not for the 210. Um, and you'll also notice that up here on the HUD, we have these new indications that come from the ARC 210. We have voice 1 showing not connected and voice 2 showing not connected. Uh, note that uh, voice 2 is not implemented at the current time. I don't know if that's the, the future SATCOM functionality or not. So anyway, uh, kick is booted up. I'm going to acknowledge the fact we have no SPI. You'll note that I can't uh, load the DTS just yet. Uh, so I then need to uh, boot up the CDU. And I'm actually going to bring up the CDU on the right multifunction display there so we can watch its startup process. Uh, once the CDU is fully booted, we then have the ability to load the DTS, uh, which uh, you can see now also has an entry for loading the ARC-210 presets. So any presets that we have from uh, the mission, uh, we can load them here, like that. I'm just going to wait a, a little bit longer for the CDU to finish its self-test. Note for the purposes of this video that I'm not powering up the Iggy, so we don't have... Uh, GPS or, or any other kind of uh, positional source right now. We don't need that for the purposes of this video. So just a bit longer. There we go. CDU is up and we have the message Iggy not ready. We now have the dots next to the, the load pages for the DTS. Let's do a load all. Uh, that blanks both displays and just displays the DTS. Uh, I'll let that go through its process. Shouldn't take too much longer. Ah, there we go. And now the aircraft is ready. And you know, see here, voice one and voice two still showing is not connected. If I go ahead and bring up the com page now, uh, I've got an option for ARC 210 presets. I can go into here and I can confirm my presets from the mission editor are loaded. So that worked nicely. Let's focus now down on the new radio head that we have here on the left console. Uh, this is the ARC-210 here. We can power it on by moving the left-hand master switch out of off into any of the modes that are implemented. I'm going to go for transmit, receive, and guard. So if I leave it in that position for a few seconds, the unit will boot up. Initialize. And then it's going to display uh, the, the first frequency that's uh, programmed. So we're currently in manual mode. This, this second knob uh, controls the, the sub modes that we're in. So we're currently transmit, receive, and guard, and we're in manual programming mode. In manual program, programming mode, I can use these rotaries to set whatever frequency I want. 
Uh, and then once I'm done, I just wait. Uh, and that will then be the currently programmed frequency. Uh, you'll notice that after a, a couple of seconds, the flip-flop is populated. So now I have the previous frequency I had programmed, which was 133. I can click the top line select key to flip-flop between what I programmed and what was the previous frequency. Also note that if I reposition my view here to look at the HUD again, voice one is now connected and showing the current frequency. But I'll, I'll go over the HUD uh, and the UFC functionalities in just a moment. For now, let's have a little look here at the radio head and what is actually implemented. So yeah, you've got manual programming. I can flip it left into presets mode. When it's in presets mode, I can simply roll the channel selector and go through all of the presets I've got. I had presets one to nine loaded here from the DTS. If I go beyond that, well, I guess it actually has ones for the others as well. Only one to nine actually came from the mission file. So that's that. Uh, let the middle line select key will allow me to switch between plain, cipher, and I can even change the cipher uh, code page. This is important for SRS. Or I can even have cipher with time delay. Uh, and that's, uh, I'm trying to remember, where is the unit for that actually? Is that usually over here? Uh, I can't currently remember. But yeah, you, you have a, a time delay functionality in this aircraft as well. Uh, just to, to operate on top of the uh, encryption. Most of the time you're going to have this in plain. If you don't have it in plain, uh, then people will tend to have a hard time actually hearing what you're saying. So that's how the presets mode works. Uh, you've got ECCM, which is the electronic counter counter measures. I actually don't know how this works, uh, to be honest. So, uh, and I don't know if it's actually implemented or not. You've got ECCM master and ECCM. Uh, but certainly preset and manual work. Uh, maritime is not implemented in, in this version of the radio. And then you can also go to guard, which by default is 243. This is effectively military guard. Or you can go to 121.5, which is in effect civilian guard. I think it's actually called Unicom or something similar like that in uh, civilian parlance. Uh, but most of the time you're going to run this in either manual or preset. That's going to be kind of the standard for you. Uh, the main mode selector, uh, as I already said, transmit and receive and guard, that's going to be the mode that you will operate the radio in most of the time. If you want to not listen on guard, you can put it into just transmit and receive. ADF functionality is not available in this version of the radio. And then you have change preset. Uh, so the way that change preset works, if I put the radio into preset, I can roll the radio to the preset that I want to edit, uh, and then I can actually simply change the frequency to anything I want. So let's just put it to 155 and then press the top line select key for load. And that is now programmed. If I now take this out and back into transmit and receive, you'll see now that uh, preset number nine is 155 as I programmed it. Although to be honest, you're gonna find it much easier to program your presets using the COM page on the multifunction display. When it comes to most of the other functionality of the radio, most of it is either related to the SATCOM or it's just plain not implemented. Uh, so you've got options here for time of day send and time of day receive. Uh, as you can see, these do nothing. Uh, GPS button does nothing. Uh, the receiver transmitter selector also does nothing. Although I wonder if maybe once they implement SATCOMs, that will be uh, RT2. You know, we currently have RT1 here. Um, so that might allow you to flip-flop between the two. You can see at the top right it's labelled RT1, which is your current one. And up on the HUD, that shows up as V1 for voice one. So we might get a, an RT2 later. Squelch can be turned on or off, but that doesn't seem to do anything. AMFM does work. You can actually flip-flop. We, we need to be in uh, manual. But if we're in manual, we could go oops, AM or FM modulation there. Offset allows you to quickly bump yourself into an offset. If you find yourself using the same frequency as, as somebody else, uh, you, you could call to the rest of your wing, oh, uh, offset by five, offset by 10, or whatever. Uh, you, can, you can offset. It goes all the way up to uh, 0 0.02. So 0 0.005, 0 0.010, 0 0.015, 0 0.020, 0 0 and then back to triple zero. So that's just used for deconflicting. Enter button doesn't seem to do anything either. So you know, most most of the, the head actually doesn't do much. Uh, you do have brightness controls, though. That'll be very, very useful when flying at night. And that's basically everything that you can do here on the head. Uh, when you're in manual mode, the flip-flop is actually really cool. This is, a, this is a feature that you have in civilian radios, and a lot of military radios don't seem to implement it. So really nice to see that here. 
Next thing that I'll demonstrate is the uh, the HUD and the upfront controller. You can actually do a lot with the radio just directly here from the upfront controller. So you'll notice here that you've got new buttons for COM1 and COM2. Uh, you also have buttons to operate with the, the IFF, IDM, uh, COM security, ECCM. These are not implemented. These don't do anything. Uh, COM2 also doesn't do anything because uh, V2 is not installed. So the only button is actually functional is COM1. Um, so it's saying kick you input error because there was nothing in the scratch pad. If I clear that, if I type a frequency into the scratch pad, so let's say we want to do one, two, one, decimal one, you don't need to do the decimals, and I press COM1, that immediately loads that frequency into voice one. You'll see there's an asterisk next to voice one because that's the currently selected radio. Uh, and I think the uh, the the RT flip-flop was, was how you would control that. But as I said, we only have voice one right now. If I want a preset, I can simply type the preset. So if I want preset nine, I just press nine, press COM one, we're now into preset nine. Uh, and I could confirm that by uh, looking down at the head. And there you go. Yeah, it's, it confirms preset number nine is the one we're currently operating with. So uh, that's basically it. That's everything you can do. You can type a frequency or you can type a preset and then just hit COM one. Uh, and I can also, oops, I can also flip flop. So you'll see that I hit COM one and it went back to the previous one. Um, actually not doing anything after I press it again. Not sure why that is. I guess that's just a functionality if you're in a preset. So if I was in preset five, there I am, I'm in preset five. I suddenly decide I want to go back to my manually tuned frequency. I could press COM one. Yeah, it just says kick you input error. I don't know why it did that. It's a double tap. Okay, there you go. That's me learning something new. Double tap the COM button and it will flip flop. That's actually really handy. Um, lastly, let's take a little look at the COM page in the multifunction display. This is actually really handy for uh, reprogramming your presets mainly. But uh, let me show you how you get in here again. We go COM, on the left hand side you've got ARC 210 presets. Select that and you can go through all your presets. There are two pages, so first page is 1 to 18. If I next, we've got uh, 19 to 30. Uh, note that uh, channels 26, 27, 28, 29 and 30 can all have different transmit and receive frequencies. Uh, so that's kind of a, a handy feature, I guess. I don't know why you would do that, but I assume there is a reason. We have the flip-flop here for the uh, to flip between the different uh, receiver transmitters, but we only have one at present. You then have frequency and name. That will allow you to change uh, the preset. So for example, if I go back to the previous page, let's choose preset number two, uh, and let's first do the frequency. So let's say that I want the frequency to be 154. I've got that in there. I can now look down at the multifunction display and press freak. It's now changed the frequency to 154. Let's now give it a name. Let's uh, press uh, letters, press letters again to stick in letters mode, and I'm gonna call it, uh, call it, let's call it bleh. There we go, there's bleh in the scratch pad. I can now look down here and press name. Preset two is now called bleh, and it has frequency 154. I could also change the modulation if I wanted. It's currently on FM, let's hit that, we'll make it AM. Uh, and that's all the functionality of the COM page. So, COM page, really nice way of seeing what frequencies you have, what they're labeled as, uh, and allow you to quickly and easily edit them. Up here on the HUD, this is probably how you're going to interact with the radio most of the time, once you've got all the, the modes set the way you want it. You've got COM1 button, and then you've got the frequency numbers. And double tapping COM1 will do the flip-flop. Very nice. I'm going to cl clear that letter thing. Uh, and then, yep. You've got the two main modes, uh, sorry, mode selectors, transmit, uh, receive, and guard, transmit and receive, ADF non-functional, change presets, test, and zero eyes are both also non-functional. So most of the time you're going to run this in transmit, receive, and guard. And then you can have manual or presets. Uh, those are the main ones that are going to be useful on the radio. So, I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option of joining Deepak's Ground Crew if you'd like to support me further. That's uh, you know, a really, really great way of, of helping me to create this content. Uh, and a big shout out to those of you who've already done so. Thank you very much, Harish Rajan, Leo Netzel, Byron Farrow, Storm Kinbari, Channel Wright, Mangash, J.R. Walker, Chandro Hedgewald, Griff Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Frantic Stone, Bread, Tier Zero, 
Erdin Kirtan, Veli Tapani Korpikanas, Tiger Muto, and Pink Floyd. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.